Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today, I want to look at some of the variables involved in some of the testing we've been doing about how medieval weapons could or couldn't penetrate armor, in particular, chainmail. Stay tuned. All right, so in a video we posted uh, last week, which just happened to come out at the same time as a video that uh, Todd and Matt Easton had done on a similar topic, uh, we were trying to stab through some contemporary riveted chainmail uh, with our rondel dagger. And we got really different results than Todd and Matt got, and there were a bunch of questions about why. Right? So when we look at testing medieval weapons, reproductions of medieval weapons, against reproductions of medieval armor, there are a bunch of variables involved, right? Some of these are how hard can the individual doing the test hit? Are they striking in a historical manner? Uh, what is the dagger or the weapon like, right? What was it for? What was the armor like and how representative is it of medieval armor? What's the backing behind the armor? Is there cloth behind it of what type, right? Is it on a firm backing like a piece of wood or is it on a piece of meat or on a punching bag? All kinds of stuff. We're gonna explore some of these, but today the variable I wanna look at is the chainmail. So here on this table behind me, I've got five different pieces of mail. Two of them are contemporary repro reproductions, and three of them are pieces of historical mail from the Oakshot Institute collection. And I've done some measurements on these. I'm gonna show you each of them up close, and we'll see how much variation there is in this mail, just in this little sample. And historically, that variation was much bigger. Right, so if you were fighting someone in, you know, 1400, you have no idea what their mail might be like, aside from reference to, you know, their general class, right? How fancy they look, uh, that might give you an idea of how good the mail was. But historical mail uh, was usually iron, not steel, uh, and there was tons of variability to it. So. I'm gonna pick up some of these pieces and we'll look at them. First, this is some chainmail that belonged to Ewart Oakshot. So this is European mail, probably, oh, 15th century, maybe 16th century. Uh, we're not really sure, it's really hard to tell uh, when exactly it's from. It is probably iron, and you can see that these rings are riveted. Now, the interior diameter of these rings is another variable, right? So there's how are they closed, right? Are they butted? Are they welded? Are they flat riveted? Are they round riveted? Uh, these ones are riveted. And the interior diameter of these rings is about six and a half millimeters. So these rings are smaller than the armor that I was testing uh, with our dagger. And the wire is also a thinner diameter than our rings. And these ones kind of vary from pretty round to pretty flat, right? They're not all round, they're not all flat. So there's a bunch of variability in there, but it's certainly a lighter weight wire than the contemporary armor, which I'll show you now. So this is the armor I was using for our test. This has an eight and a half millimeter uh, diameter on the inside of the rings. You can see that these are all flat and they are uh, solid rings interspersed with riveted rings. These are steel. This is the one that was really hard to get through uh, with the dagger. And this is just a piece of the armor that I wear uh, for fighting. You can see that this is much thicker than that historical armor. Here is a historical male shirt from the Oakshot collection. This one is also 
riveted mail. Right? I'll post some pictures so you can look at it in closer detail. The diameter on these is about seven and a half millimeters. So it's a little bigger than the other one of Oak Shots. This one is probably German and our notes suggest that it might be 16th century. Uh, but again, it's really hard to know. You can see that the wires, the diameter on this, the wire diameter is much finer than this contemporary uh, armor from India, right? So smaller rings with smaller holes in them, smaller diameter wire. Here is another contemporary piece of armor. This one, you can see that it's riveted, right? Alternating rings. Nope, I'm sorry. Every ring on this is riveted and they are round rings. And the diameter of these rings is about the same as the piece of armor uh, that I wear, right? Eight and a half millimeters, something like that. So this is similar, except that every ring is riveted and they're round. Finally, here's another historical shirt. And this one is, looks like pinch welded. So this one's iron. They are round rings. They're about eight and a half millimeters. So they're closer to the modern ones. And the rings appear to have been pinched while hot, right? Which is a way that you can weld iron not very easily. Can you do steel uh, like that? So this armor is roughly as heavy as the modern steel armors, and the rings are pretty similar in size to those of the round ring modern armor. So there's a lot of variability between these different armors. It means that the point of a dagger is going to penetrate differently through these rings. And this is the dagger I was using for our test. These are the modern round rings. You can see I'm getting an inch of penetration on that without doing anything except just sticking it there. Uh, something we'll look at in a future video is the geometry of the blades and how that impacts this penetration, right? But on this particular one, this one dagger penetrates through the mail without force uh, further than it does in the flat ring mail that I was using. And with this historical mail, be careful with it, but you can see that we still get about an inch of penetration uh, through that mail. Now the smaller rings are clearly going to allow less penetration. On this guy, it's only about a quarter of an inch that it goes through there. And that's gonna change the dynamics if you're wearing this armor and this dagger is coming through into one of your joints. Now, this armor that has smaller diameter rings is probably also going to be easier to cut through those rings or to break through those rings than it would be the case for the heavier wire rings like the historical welded armor we just looked at or the reproduction armors uh, that we examined previously to that. So in future videos, we'll examine some of these other dynamics and how they work. Clearly, I'm not gonna bust through these historical armors, uh, but it's nice to have some historical ones that we can really look at and ponder what it means for our discussions of how these different weapons and armors interacted. Thank you.